happy little games. Hello everybody, Batman QC here. Before we get started, my trusty but perhaps rusty Google Analytics have told me that only 7% of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you like this content, would you please like, share, and subscribe? This really helps as I'm still trying to build my channel. Hope you enjoy the video. Thank you. When you look back at the golden age of arcades, there are a number of titles that instantly spring to mind. Space Invaders. Asteroids. Pac-Man. Donkey Kong, and the game that we are taking a look at today, Centipede. This pastel colored beautiful shooter would win over the hearts of not only male gamers, but for the first time female gamers as well and with good reason. Why did this game appeal to the female audience? What is the Atari treasure chest and how does it factor into the creation of this game? So grab your magic wand and get ready to kill some mushrooms because this is the history of Centipede. The year is 1980 and recent Atari hire Donna Bailey is feeling like a fish out of water. According to Miss Bailey, she was outnumbered by a ratio of 30 to 1 as she was the only female software engineer in the arcade division. Prior to her stint at Atari, she had been working at General Motors when a friend introduced her to the game Space Invaders. She was mesmerized and knew this was the future. Soon thereafter, she quit GM and said California is the place she ought to be because there was only one company in town that she wanted to work for and that was Atari. The idea for Centipede came from Atari's treasure chest which was a notebook full of ideas and concepts that came from various brainstorming sessions at Atari. She had gravitated towards the only idea that did not revolve around killing something with lasers or sports. Centipede was described as a multi-segmented bug that crawls out of the screen and gets shot piece by piece. Miss Bailey was joined on the project by Ed Logg who had previously designed the Atari smash hit Asteroids. Since this was her first actual arcade game she had worked on, every day was a learning experience. According to Mr. Log, he had done about 50% of the programming and most of the game's design. The initial control scheme featured a five button layout similar to Mr. Log's arcade title Asteroids. The problem with this is that Ms. Bailey was having trouble using these controls. They eventually tried a joystick instead which made the game much more playable for her but not quite as fun as she had hoped. As a last ditch effort they tried a trackball which totally changed the game. The trackball was one of the things that helped the game appeal to female gamers. Another feature that people would remember from the game are the distinct pastel colors. Miss Bailey had wanted the colors to pop off the screen and it happened by a happy accident. A technician was making adjustments to the game and was cycling through the colors when the pastels came on the screen. Miss Bailey let out a yell and said that's it. She went through and fine tuned each level until she got exactly the right colors. When the game went to test markets it was an instantaneous success and brought in not only the male gamers but the female gamers as well. According to Miss Bailey, the female market wasn't intended as they were just trying to make a game that looked good and appealed to a broad audience. The game would quickly become the second best selling arcade game at that time right behind Space Invaders. Centipede was released by Atari into the arcades in 1980. As the story goes, you are trapped in the enchanted forest armed only with a magic wand to defend yourself against the various forest entities. You have to use your wand to shoot sparks at approaching insects to score points by pressing the lone fire button. You can hold the fire button down which will enable rapid fire shots. If you do get bitten by an insect you will become paralyzed and lose one of your three starting wands. Among the various creatures you have to destroy is the big bad himself the centipede. He will attack you in 12 waves. 
He is a long creature made up of 11 segments with a head attached to it. The second wave sees the body made up of 10 segments with a head attached and so forth until you reach the 12th stage. At this point, the game will repeat at a higher difficulty. The centipede always attacks from the top and slinks its way downward. If one of your wand sparks hits the centipede, that particular section will turn into a mushroom. If you are unable to kill the centipede before it reaches the bottom, it will cycle left to right and stay at the bottom attempting to kill you. Segment heads will randomly appear on each side, so be on the lookout for that. A rather pesky spider is another creature feature which will destroy any mushroom it touches. If you're looking for maximum points, kill the spider as close to you as possible. The flea will drop down after most of the mushrooms have been destroyed in the play area, leaving a trail of new mushrooms in its wake. According to Ms. Bailey, this was designed as an ant, but somehow the name got changed to flea and it stuck. If you do manage to hit the flea, he will drop down much faster the second time. The scorpion will appear in the third stage and poison any mushroom it touches. Any centipede that touches the poison mushroom will go straight to the bottom without even passing go. And finally, magic mushrooms fill the play area and can be used as a cover for the player or be viewed as obstacles. It does take four shots to completely destroy a mushroom. More mushrooms will populate the play area the more pieces of the centipede and insects you kill. The game shifts in an upright cabinet and also a two-player sit-down cocktail game with four modes of play. Single player, two-player alternating, dual-player competition which is only available on the cocktail version. Both players appear on the screen at the same time and the shots will paralyze the other player. Finally, there is a team player mode where both players are on screen and scoring is combined. Your shots will not affect the other player. The game was another mega hit for Atari and is still loved today. Adding the trackball was a stroke of genius because it really brought something unique both in terms of aesthetics and overall gameplay. There were a number of conversions for the various systems back in the day which I will cover at the end of the video. In 1982, Millipede was released into the arcades. Originally going to be released as Centipede Deluxe. Atari felt there was enough different content to warrant a different name so it wouldn't be seen as just an upgrade. This was designed solely by Ed Log with no sign of Donna Bailey in sight. The story is a bit different this time around as well. You take on the role of a character by the name of Archer who shoots, surprise surprise, arrows at the oncoming vermin as they tear through his mushroom forest. The controls are exactly the same as the first game with that wonderful trackball making a comeback. The game should be considered more of an update than a full-blown sequel, but it does offer a number of changes. For starters, the millipede itself moves faster and his head is harder to hit. There were a lot of new enemies this time around, including earwigs, which replace the scorpions as they will make mushrooms poisonous. Ladybugs, which will turn any mushroom it comes into contact with into an indestructible flower. Dragonflies will drop mushrooms. Mosquitoes will bounce off the screen as they descend diagonally. If you manage to hit one, all mushrooms will move up one row. Bees replace the fleas as they drop mushrooms in a vertical line and along came a spider who makes his triumphant return. Something that will help the player are the DDT bombs which will eliminate all enemies and mushrooms within the existing cloud. Four of these lovely items will appear at once on the play area. At various times a bonus level will pop up with the millipede being replaced by a swarm of enemies. With each enemy you kill the point value goes up until it reaches 1000. The level is over once you complete the swarm or you die.
In 1998, Hasbro brought us a 3D reimagining of the original arcade game simply titled Centipede. This was made available for the Dreamcast, Macintosh, PC, PlayStation, and GameCom. As the story goes, every 100 years, the Centipede and his loyal army of insects return to the druid-like people who live in collective villages known as Weedum. They have crowned you as their champion and defender of their land. Rather than just be confined to a small area to move around in, this game opens up the world which hinders the gameplay more than it helps. The graphics are merely average as this was an early 3D title. There are three viewpoints available which include a 2D viewpoint similar to the original arcade game, a closer zoomed in view and an over the shoulder view which makes the 3D really stand out. The music is simply adequate with some 90's techno junk coming out of my poor speakers. The controls are fine for what they are and it is fun for a short while, but the repetition will quickly set in. If you like the original arcade game then you should enjoy this one at least for a little while. <laughs> Twenty eleven brought us the release of Centipede Infestation for the Nintendo Wii and 3DS. As the story goes, the timeline involves a post apocalyptic world in which the mutant bugs have crawled out of the earth to take over, and it's up to you to squash them for good. This is a two player simultaneous shooter in which you take on the role of Max and Maisie and travel from landscape to landscape dealing with the infestation. The game is an odd little bug, no pun intended, in which you can use the classic controller with a control scheme similar to Robotron or Smash TV. If you choose to use the Wiimote and Nunchuck, the game feels more like the Alien Syndrome reboot. Neither of these two exactly feel like classic Centipede. The graphics are not too bad and the sound is actually pretty good with some bass thumping music. The controls are nice and tight with spot on hit detection. The game is fast and furious and perhaps even a little faster than the original arcade game. It is fun to play due to the brisk pace but I wouldn't consider this a part of the Centipede family as it feels just a little bit too different. The original game has been released numerous times over the years on iOS and Android. In 2013, the arcade game has a blink and you miss it cameo in the movie Wreck-It Ralph. The game had a much more substantial role than 2015's Pixels. There have been numerous keychains and handhelds released over the past few years, but the coolest home version that I've seen is from manufacturer Arcade 1UP. These little 4 foot tall beauties cost around $250 and comes with 4 games, including Millipede, Missile Command, Crystal Castles, and Centipede, complete with a trackball for that authentic arcade experience. Not only do you get authentic gameplay thanks to the emulation of the original arcade games, but the cabinet looks great and is a very close match to the original. 2019 brought the debut of Centipede Chaos into the arcades. This is a simultaneous three player game where the players can earn tickets by shooting at numerous waves of enemies with everyone joining in for multiple boss battles and additional tickets. You do have an objective in the game in which you have to reach the 10th wave and defeat the Mega Spider to win the game's jackpot. To do this, no continues are allowed as well as nobody allowed to join, so the objective is very difficult. If arcade operators choose to do so, they can disable the ticket redemption part of the game 
and it will become a more traditional endless arcade experience. A traditional joystick is used this time around, but from what I've read it doesn't hinder the gameplay all that much and it still feels like classic centipede. You also get to sit on cute little mushroom stools, so that right there is a win-win in my book. The arcade game was so successful that it received a board game from Milton Bradley, a comic book from DC Comics which was packed in with the Atari version, and a song titled Ode to Centipede on the Pac-Man Fever album. After these messages we'll be right back. There were a number of official conversions available and I'm going to try to cover them all so hopefully none have slipped through the cracks. What I won't be covering are the various clones as there were a ton of these for the home computers. This was actually one of the most cloned games right next to Pac-Man due to the popularity of the original and the primitive hardware it was running on making it easy to get it up and running on 8-bit computers at the time. The first one we are talking about that was one of the most popular was the Atari 2600 version. Despite the primitive hardware, this is a really good conversion even if your player looks like a flat piece of toast. The graphics are nothing to write home about, but they are adequate and get the job done. The sound effects are fantastic and sound really close to the arcade original. The thing that really shines though was the gameplay. Even with the joystick, it feels like Centipede. Now, plug in the trackball accessory for the Atari 2600 and the controls are even better. This is a fantastic conversion and should be checked out if you haven't done so already. Television version is up next and while we actually get mushrooms that look like mushrooms on the playfield, the animation is unfortunately extremely choppy. Now I know the Intellivision is capable of pulling off something closer to the arcade, but this really does hinder the gameplay. After playing for a while you sort of get used to it and it does become a bit more fun in my opinion. But overall, the playability of the 2600 version is leaps and bounds above this one. The Commodore VIC-20 port is really well done with fairly detailed sprites and fast gameplay. The controls are good and even better with the Atari trackball plugged in. The animation is fairly smooth and the sound effects and music are well done. This is an excellent cartridge release for Commodore's early computer. Sticking with the home computer line, the Texas Instruments version is up next. This is really good with large detailed sprites except for the centipede which is a bit on the small side. The animation is fairly smooth and it does feel like the arcade game. The gameplay is fantastic with nice tight controls. Another excellent official centipede conversion.
I was pleasantly surprised by how detailed the graphics were on the MS-DOS version. This looks very close to the arcade game and is the best one I've seen so far. Unfortunately, the choppy animation sort of ruins it in my opinion. You do get used to it the more you play, but what you don't get used to are the beloved farts and queefs that squeak out of the PC speaker. I don't know how PC owners back in the day dealt with this aside from putting on noise cancelling headphones. The gameplay is good though if you can just get used to the choppy choppy animation. The ColecoVision port is rather fantastic despite some differences in the graphics. The animation especially on the centipede is silky smooth and looks really good. The sound effects and music are nice and really remind you of the arcade game. Control wise it's nice and tight but when you pull out the trackball accessory it ups the playability at least 5 notches. It's another excellent arcade conversion that you have come to expect on the ColecoVision. The Atari 5200 version is even better than the ColecoVision when it comes to animation and gameplay. The animation in particular is silky smooth and really helps the overall feel of the game. The graphics are large and in charge with the centipede looking great with large detailed segments. The sound effects and music are spot on and is a very close representation of the original. If you are lucky enough to have the trackball accessory, bust that thing out and enjoy a fantastic version that you can play at home. The good old Commodore 64 version is up next and I have to say compared to the 5200 and ColecoVision versions, this one is a bit of a letdown. The graphics are detailed but the problem comes with the animation of the centipede. It's just a bit too choppy in my opinion. The sound effects and music are decent but the wonderful SID chip is capable of so much more. The star of the show was definitely the gameplay even when playing with a joystick. Thanks to the Commodore computers using the same 9 pin joystick layout as the Atari line, you are able to use the trackball from that system on the 64 making it feel almost exactly like the arcade game. This was another early cartridge release for the system and despite its flaws it's still a good version. Now let's take a look at the abomination that is the Apple II version. First off the mushrooms look like they just got out of preschool but at least there are plenty of them on screen. The animation is extremely choppy but the thing that really rears its ugly head is the sound. If you thought the farts and queefs of the MS-DOS version were bad, then be prepared for full blown diarrhea from both the front and the back. Seriously, you have to mute this while playing because after 9.8 seconds you will want to gouge your eardrums out. On the bright side though, it doesn't play too bad. Considering how well the 5200 version turned out, you would expect something similar on the Atari 8-bit computer line. Unfortunately, that is just not the case. While the graphics are fairly large, they are only single color and lack any sort of detail. The animation is very choppy especially when compared to the 5200. The sound effects and music are good along with the gameplay provided you can get used to the choppy animation. 
Another plus is the addition of the trackball which really makes it feel like the arcade game. Let's stick with the Atari line and look at the 7800 version. Everything looks really good from the mushrooms, to the spiders, to the silky smooth animation on the centipede. The speed of the game is darn near identical to the arcade game and it really shows when you are playing it. Sound effects and music are great and the controls are good but even better when you plug in a trackball. This was one of the original titles launched with the 7800 system and it's another excellent conversion. <laughs> The game was released as part of Arcade's Greatest Hits, the Atari Collection on the Super Nintendo, Sega Saturn, and PlayStation. This compilation of games includes Asteroids, Battlezone, Missile Command, Super Breakout, Tempest, and Centipede. The Super Nintendo version shown here is rather good and is very close to being arcade perfect. The graphics are very detailed with the silky smooth animation. Sound effects and music are spot on along with the gameplay. Although there is no trackball support in any version, the PlayStation version does have support for the PlayStation mouse which does help the gameplay quite a bit. There are some extras on the PlayStation and Sega Saturn versions including interviews with the original developers of the games. If slow monochrome gaming is your thing or you just happen to be colorblind, then the Game Boy version of Centipede is right up your alley. While the graphics are large and fairly detailed, the animation and speed is just way too slow and way too choppy. The sound effects are horrible but not quite queef worthy. The controls are adequate but again, with animation this choppy it makes it hard to enjoy the game. The game was released under the Arcade Classics title for the Game Gear. This is a compilation of three games including Centipede, Missile Command, and Ultra Pong. This is a rather ugly conversion with the Centipede looking to be having a seizure as it's coming down the screen. Everything else looks decent although a bit small when attempting to play on a real Game Gear unit. The gameplay is adequate but not quite up to the standards of the original. The game was also released for the Sega Master System in Europe under the Arcade Smash Hits which included Centipede, Breakout, and Missile Command. Each of these included graphic and audio updates which looks really nice. The animation is silky smooth and the controls are very responsive. This is much better than the Game Gear version so check it out if you have a chance. We go from a pretty well received Sega Master System version to the lowest of lows which is the Game Boy Color version. If you want your centipede game to be a clunky, chunky, funky affair then this is the one for you. The graphics are fairly detailed with nice rainbow mushrooms littering the playfield. The animation though is very choppy making it extremely difficult to get used to. The game is also a bit on the slow side making it one of the easiest versions I've played. If you are a centipede weenie be sure and check this one out. Shh. 
shipping on a compilation cart that featured Breakout, Warlords, and Centipede is the Game Boy Advance version. This is another excellent handheld version that features nice detailed sprites with smooth animation. The colors are very vibrant and look really good when compared to the arcade game. The sound effects and music are very close to the arcade game and controls really well. Definitely great for a round of Centipede on the go. That wraps up the history of Centipede. It's one of those original arcade classics that came out right at the beginning of the golden age of arcades. It has endured the test of time since its inception over 40 years ago. It's still one of my favorite shooters and I still pick it up and play a few rounds every so often. If you've never had the chance to kill some bugs while doing some mushrooms, be sure and check this game out. You'll be glad you did. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also, be sure and check out my Patreon page if you would like to support me there. Thank you so much for watching.